I've heard this urban legend of a gorilla that lives in the sewer systems. He's gotten smarter. He wants more like him. He wants kids? Because I'm pretty sure one telepathic great ape is more than enough for this city. I still don't have my speed. I can't stop him. Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Gorilla Garage is coming. Let's break this trailer down. Then I'm gonna do my Q&A video at the end of this. So here we go. The big A story of the episode, as you can see, is Caitlyn Snow getting abducted by Garad, him wanting more like him. I think that's just a tee up for Gorilla City, or at least Solovar, which is just blow my mind. If they ever got the chance to do Gorilla City, that would just be so crazy. The most cartoony thing that they've done all year so far is King Shark, so I'm interested to see if they top themselves. I mean, before they brought him on last year, you'd think that something like this would only work in a cartoon, but they totally made Grodd work, then they made King Shark work, so I think they can totally make Gorilla City work at a certain point. Now, if you haven't read the comics, you don't know what Gorilla City is. Gorilla City is basically just the society that rises up around Grodd and Solovar. Now, Gorilla Grodd has traditionally been a villain. When he got his powers in the classic comics, there was another ape who was a good character named Solovar who also got powers, who kind of battled it out with Grodd. It was like this riff on Planet of the Apes where you have bad apes that want to take over humanity, then you have good apes that want to coexist. Solovar was just the good part of that equation. But as we've seen on the show so far, Gorilla Grodd is the only super smart ape. So either they're going to change his character just a little bit, make him a little bit more complex, or they're going to create a Solovar to battle it out with him as they try to further Gorilla society. And the really cool thing about Gorilla City is that it's highly technologically advanced. The gorillas are so smart that they found a way to cloak it from the rest of the world. Obviously a lot of the superheroes of the planet know where it is, but normal people have absolutely no idea that it exists. If you guys are familiar with Star Wars canon, it's kind of like the planet Kashyyyk, the Wookiee planet. Highly technologically advanced, but they all still live in trees like their ancestors did. So super smart gorillas create a city, live in trees, but the technology is on par with what you would find in Star Labs. So that's like way off in the distance. This episode is mostly a King Kong allegory, the Anne Darrow character being Caitlin Snow. Now if you've never seen King Kong, she's like the actress that gets caught by King Kong, but she ends up sympathizing with him. Like, oh, he just wants to live his life in peace. Why don't we just leave him alone? So Caitlin Snow, as you can see, starts to sympathize with Grodd. He just wants another one like him. And Cisco's all like, I'm calling bullshit on this. We don't need more super smart gorillas. So that's the big A story, and as you can see, it looks like Harrison Wells of Earth 2 tries to dress up in Aobard Dawn's reverse Flash costume to try and get Caitlyn back. The B story is Barry getting his speed back after his battle with Zoom. Now it looks like he gets his legs back, and then he has some sort of mental block that he can't get over, like, there's nothing wrong with your legs, you should have your speed back, there's something inside you that's stopping you from accessing your powers. So Barry has to get his groove back in order to re-access the speed force. But the fun of the episode is, is that he goes full-blown Eobard Thawn riding around in the wheelchair until he does. And we get to see his dad come back. I know a lot of people want John Wesley Shift to be Zoom. I feel like he's definitely high on the candidate list. I'm still holding out for Wally West too. Like he's still on my list there. But just be prepared to adjust your expectations based on clues we get in future episodes. If you remember last year in episode 9 when they revealed Harrison Wells is the man in the yellow suit. I'm not really expecting a reveal that big in episode 9 this year. But I do think that we'll learn a lot more about who it is. Like we learned Harrison Wells was the man in the yellow suit, we didn't learn that he was Eobard Thawne in disguise until much later in the season. So just expect a reveal on par with that. Like we might learn a little bit more about Zoom's plan, like why it's so important for him to be the fastest Flash in the multiverse, but I'm not expecting him to rip his hood off. That would be a big surprise. I, I would flip my shit if that happened. So here we go, on to questions. I'm just gonna pick from the Flash first, then I'll do some Arrow questions. David Lakin asks, Henry Allen is Zoom, you, you say in all caps. Well, it would be poetic like Thomas Wayne and Robert Queen on Earth 2. I definitely think it would be really interesting if he were Zoom, but I, but I also believe that this season is a lot more about Iris' family, so I'm hoping that Zoom is more central to that. For those that are asking about Robert Queen too, that'll be a lot of fun. I'm not expecting that actor to come back and do any Green Arrow stuff on The Flash. I think that was just meant as an Easter egg. Sullivan Wilbur asks, Zoom is not anyone because Harrison Wells created Zoom. Get it? I think you meant that more as a joke, but I do like the idea that Zoom is just like a manifestation of the negative speed force, or just a manifestation of the speed force itself, like he is not an actual person. The reason that's not true though is that Harrison Wells of Earth 2 said that Zoom used to be a human being, so he, he actually is a person that we'll see eventually. 
The really interesting thing about his character, though, is it sounds like he's super evil because Tony Todd just sounds so scary. But it seems like as he's gotten more powerful, it's twisted him more and more physically and mentally. So Zoom, before he got his powers, may have just been a slightly unstable personality. Like he, he wasn't this grand villain until he started killing other speedsters. And don't you just wonder if he's traveled to other Earths in the multiverse and killed other speedsters like Earth 4, 5, 6, 7, 8? Next question from Elm Street asks, how will the Flash beat Zoom? Well, they teased it a little bit in this last episode, take his speed out of the equation. The other part is Barry learning to access the speed force more fully, just getting better with his powers. The interesting thing about Barry is, is that he's already like at maximum speed force potential. It's just that his ability to use that speed is dependent upon his mental state. So if he doesn't think he can do something, he can't do it. It's like Yoda with Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker doubts himself, so he can't do something. So until Barry stops doubting himself, Zoom will always be faster. But I think taking Zoom's speed out of the equation will be a big part of defeating him. The other thing I'm hoping for is that Jay Garrick gets his speed back and we see another speedster, like Wally West as Kid Flash maybe, like we see a Flash family team up to take Zoom down. Next question, Simon Cookie Monster asks, that's an awesome name. Wait, so episode eight of Flash is part one and Arrow episode eight is part two. You're talking about the Flaro crossover. That's right. So what's going to happen is, is after this next week's episode, there's going to be one week break. Then we come back. So like the first week in December will be the big Flash Arrow crossover this year. Think of it as like a two hour movie that's just broken into two parts. So half of it takes place on the Flash. The other half takes place on Arrow. And the really cool thing is that they're setting up a whole bunch of Legends of Tomorrow stuff. Like just look at this picture. You see both Hawkman and Hawkgirl in full attire. Now this picture specifically is from the Arrow half of the crossover. So my guess is, is that we meet Hawkman in like the first part of that. He tries to explain to Hawkgirl who she is, what her powers are. We learn about Vandal Savage. That's basically the two hour episode that's gonna introduce him. So that will create the need for Legends of Tomorrow for that big team up and Rip Hunter to come in. The mid-season finales are episode nine. Now each show has its own big bad, like Damien Dark on Arrow and Zoom on The Flash. So they'll have like their own independent story for episode nine, but episode eight will be this big shared story. Next question, moving on to Arrow stuff. Matt Seekins asks, didn't Felicity refer to Diggle as Spartan when she was with Mr. Terrific? New call sign, maybe. Yeah, actually, Mark Guggenheim confirmed that that will be Diggle's call sign. And it's, it's not intended to be a comic book thing. It's just supposed to sound badass. Remember, Mr. Terrific does not know who the rest of Team Arrow is. He doesn't know their identities. Although he's like the third smartest person on the planet, he'll probably figure it out. But the call signs are just meant to mask their identities. That's the only reason she says that. Next question, Jay Castro asks, I think when Damien said new life, he was talking about new gods. So this is actually a bit of a long shot. I'm not expecting that box to end up being a mother box, but it definitely looks like it could be one. The thing about Arrow this season is that it's supposed to be all about mysticism and magic. So I'm actually thinking that it's going to be something more magically based, which I guess you can consider New Gods territory, but I think the plot will somehow dovetail with Legends of Tomorrow. I'm expecting Vandal Savage to be part of Hive. So don't hold your breath on New Genesis or Apocalypse, but if Smallville could do a version of Darkseid, then they could totally do it in this Arrow Flash Legends of Tomorrow universe. Next question, Nas asks, do you think that the political advisor for Oliver is secretly working for Hive? Do you have any more guesses about who's in the grave at the end of episode one? But the actor that they cast seems like he's tied up more in Thea's storyline than he is in Oliver. So if there's going to be someone to take him down eventually or take him on, then I think it's going to be Thea. Speaking about the grave though, I'm still convinced that it's either Quentin or Diggle. Paul Blackthorne is an amazing actor, so it would suck if the show had to lose him. But I could also see how Diggle's quest to learn more about his brother would drive him into that grave. Him learning about his brother being a crime lord gave him zero closure, so this matter is definitely not over with him. But I will say congratulations to this week's Reverse Flash Ring giveaway winner, Henry Wu. Be sure to private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact info. The next giveaway will start whenever I post my Flash video this week. Bunch of awesome stuff happening. I'll, I'll try to drop like the really important news during my Flash Arrow videos. And I have been doing Supergirl videos at the end of the week. So if you want to see those, they do exist. I have a playlist. I'll put a link in the description. While you guys wait for my Walking Dead video to post tonight, you can click here for all the Star Wars videos that I've been posting the last couple of days. And you can click here for all my other DC Supergirl Flash Arrow videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.